Start the party. Up and talk to. South lady, I'm about mine. South lady, I'm gonna shine. Today on the show, I am rocking with y'all, upcoming funny comedian. We got Mr. Aaron rolling with me. What's up, Aaron? How are you? Hey, Sandy, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So tell me, uh, tell, well, I know a little bit about you. Tell my listeners, how did you actually get into this stand-up comedy, or the comedy industry? Well, I've been a fan and a student of comedy for, since I can remember, not knowing that I was studying uh, comedy to become a stand-up in about five and a half Six years ago, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm at the house and I'm with the kids and they running around and the, <laughs> and with the wife and I'm like, yo, I got all of this, but something is missing. Like, I, I love my family, but you know, we always had that little void or whatever. And and I said, something is missing. And I said, stand up comedy because I've always been that goofy dude. I've always been that funny guy, making people laugh. And you know, and the reason why I made people laugh is because I had to keep myself laughing because of my background so i was like you know what let me let me uh take a class and i took a class to turn these crazy thoughts into into a joke or a story a funny story and i was able to uh start out like that and and it just took off i got serious about it because i got passionate about it i fell in love with it you know okay Okay. so i okay so i know you were an officer of the law and you decided to hang that up so was that that was it the balancing of trying to do your your career your dream career job and you know trying to serve the community it's just you just couldn't do them both right like i i was doing them both for a long time and, mm-hmm. and for about five five years and then um after the pandemic because that was like a year and a half of high like a hiatus for a year and a half for comedians um i wasn't doing the zoom calls and all that craziness um so i was basically just sitting down and working actually because uh, i was an essential worker so i um after the pandemic you know lunell queen of comedy she was like yo aaron i'm going back out on the road i want you to uh feature for me and i and i said okay and i talked to my supervisors at the time and we had some really good supervisors uh at the time and my captain and my lieutenant and my sergeant was like all right Aaron, we'll, we'll work with you go ahead and do your thing and i was like all right great so i had a few weekends off here and there because i was working i had to work a lot of the weekend mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they gave them to me off but then cat came around cat williams came around and asked lunel if, if i would open the show and she was like what are you serious and he goes yeah I, you know i think he's funny i know I, you know I, i'm hearing good things about him so uh, i want him to open up my tour and so we were we went on the road with cat okay and um yeah and then it got to the it got to a point where we had some new a new captain, a new lieutenant for my unit, and I and I tried to get a leave of absence for multiple reasons, not just comedy, but for some family mm-hmm, mm-hmm. family situation. And, and the captain was like, "No," and we didn't really see the eye see eye to eye on a lot of things. We didn't he, when he came back to my unit as he used to be a sergeant or whatever. That's boring stuff. But I'm saying like he didn't really like me. Um, just jealous, went, just a hater. And, That's all it was. Yeah, he was a hater. <laughs> And I was trying to take the unpaid leave of absence. I was like, yo, I don't need the money. Just, like, let me do my thing. Right, right. And he was like, I guess he was just like, no, nah, and hating on me. So I said, all right, you know what? Uh, I'll, you put me in a corner. I don't need you. Y'all need me more. And I know the community is going to miss me, but I got to walk away. That's right. And, and you know what? And I'm telling you, I've heard some of your things, and you are funny. So that's that's why I was asking you. I cannot wait till you hit H Town and let H Town see you, meet you, and show you the love. Cause I'm gonna be the first one. I'm gonna be standing not at the door. I'm gonna be standing at the stage. <laughs> Said I look. I, right. I interviewed him already, so I know what he got. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a reach for fall to come out to H Town this fall because I'm, I I do want to work on my special. 
um, that I'm going to be filming soon, uh, and the special is going to be called Defunded. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> cause I defunded myself when I walked away, you know? I know, <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, was it, I'm sure it was, uh, it's uh, an experience working with Kat, but when I tell you I love that that Linnea, oh my God, that is when I say that is my girl, that is my girl. I love her. Oh, that's everybody's girl. That she is my girl. Original bad girl. A comedy is a queen. Oh my, yeah. yes, it sure there's, sure there's, is. Yeah, she she you know a, a lot of women. There's not a a lot of uh, female comedians that are household names, unfortunately. And she is one of them. Yep. And she's she's actually a voice for other female comedians because. And it's funny because we'll be out and somebody won't, won't remember her name, but they know her. Mm -hmm. And and she'll get on her. She'll be like, you know, somebody I be like, yo, what's my name? Oh, well, it's no, no, no. You should know. If I ask you, <laughs> give me five male comedians' names, you could name them in a, in a in an instant. I need you need to learn about these female comedians and know our name. That's so true. She's always fighting for the females, which is lovely. That's true. That is true. And I'll tell you, and let Cat. I didn't know Cat was actually on tour, but I mean, I'm sure he was. But you know, I guess because I don't really see him a lot out. Well, you know. he doesn't the, the genius thing about Cat is a lot of comedians spend millions of dollars on advertising. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And. And Cat is doing this. That's why he, they call him the king of underground comedy. Because he's doing it without radio. He's doing it without interviews. He's doing it without advertising. And people, he's filling these arenas up. He is. When he's filling these arenas up. They're like, you know, at least, you know, uh, 10,000 seats in these arenas that he's doing. And um, he's filling them up. And he's about to start another one because he had his first special now he's about to uh, not his first but his, he had a special for last year now he's going to start another one and he's going to have different comedians on so it's going to be now uh, you're going to you're going to be a part of that one though right i don't i don't know i don't know the thing about that is cat will call you at the last second and be like uh yeah come on you know so um, well he better get first, you he better <laughs> I say he better have you on that tour. Uh, hey, you know what? I hope so. You know he he's he's and to watch him work. Oh my gosh, dude! Cat is a is a is a genius to watch him. I mean, we had some crazy nights too. People, some you know, ten thousand, twenty thousand people out there. So there's gonna be a fight. Um, there's gonna be somebody getting kicked out, just like the comedy club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but the way he is able to bring twenty thousand people back in. Um, and 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 get them back the attention back on him after something happens is crazy. Oh my god! Oh, it's, he's a genius. Yeah, yeah. And 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 who he had on that tour, I was just learning every weekend. Mark Curry, Red Grant. Yeah, Mark you know, Curry. He finally came back know. out. Huh? That's cool. Cause he hadn't been out in a minute. Yeah, and and, and I think Mark might be on this one as well. Um, and if you haven't seen Mark Curry. Um, you need to go see him. Well, I want to. I want to know about you. So, what 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 you got working on? Tell me what what you have going on right now. So right now, I am. Uh, I like I said, I'm working on that special. We're gonna film it soon. Coming up, we got to get some more uh, funding for that. Okay. But um, but we're gonna we're working on that. Calling it defunded. As at the same time, okay. we're gonna be hitting these clubs around town. I think uh, Houston is now going to be on my radar since I've talked Yes, to yes. Coming up in the fall. Um, and I, and I want to do some, the thing about me is I, I, I'm a crossover comedian, what you call a crossover comedian. I could go in any room. I could do uh, clean comedy, um, family oriented as well. So, you know, and I know there's a lot of our brothers and sisters that are in law enforcement, fire, nursing, and I want to start doing, and I'm looking towards so I'm looking forward to a um, a first responders tour as well. Now that's I mean, now that sounds cool. Yeah, me and my team want to do a first responders tour because you know we have a lot of our brothers and sisters in you know law enforcement. Let's just talk about law enforcement mm -hmm. where 
you know, they, they just they just doing it for a job, and they really trying to do the right thing. Now, do we come across, across some racism in law enforcement? Yes, we do. And are we talking about it in front of them? Yes, we are. We'll, we'll speak up. So that's the thing about, you know, it's not all law enforcement that's bad. We got just some bad apples that we got to get rid of in law enforcement out there. So just like any other profession. And, uh, you know, they deserve to laugh, too. So we're going to try to hit these firefighters, law enforcement, nurses, doctors, these first responders, and get them out uh, out of their, um, uh, you know, out of their homes to come and laugh and mm -hmm. after and stuff like that. So that's what I'm working on right now. So let me ask you this. If um, you can work with any additional comedian besides Lunell or Kat, who would it be? Who would, who would be your ideal dream comedian that, to work with? Um, of course, Dave Chappelle. Okay. I've, I've had the opportunity to meet him. He's actually told me, uh, uh, I need to see your set. He was like, I need to see your set. You opening for Kat and Lunell? Yeah, I need to see you. That's what I'm and talking then, about. And then um, I've, I've had the the opportunity and the honor to work with Chris Spencer. Okay. Um, I, I opened up for Chris a few times, David mm -hmm. Arnold as well. So my dreams are like actually coming true. I wouldn't mind working with Kevin Hart. I wouldn't mind working with these these funny, very funny, established. He is funny. Mike, yes, Mike Epps. Um, love Mike Epps. Uh, shoot, I like I like Bill Burr a lot too. So. You know, like I said, I, I'm a student of the game. Mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of comedians that I like. So those are the names that I would love to work with um, as well. Okay. There's one comedian out there that's gonna about to. She's she's been opening up for a guy Tori. Her name is Pretty Ricky, and Pretty Ricky is about to go on tour with Cat Williams. I uh -huh. think. And so okay. he's a, somebody who uh, we I know the friend of mine, but we haven't actually worked together but that will be the next step is for us to work together because she's that kind of person where her energy is off the chain just like mine you saw a little bit of my stuff you probably can see that my i'm high energy very <laughs> high energy <laughs> all over the place <laughs> well let me let me ask you lastly for anyone that's trying to you know step out in faith want to do like what you did or you know, I mean with anything if they want to act become a comedian what what words of wisdom would you share um, I would say that fear is an illusion and get past the fear. Don't think that you cannot do something if, you know, with the disbelief on, in yourself. You have to really, really, really work hard at your craft, but step out on faith and really believe in yourself. Um, I had to, you know, we get discouraged a lot. Oh, are people going to like it? Are people going to come? Are people going to watch this or, you know, or, or, or see me do that? And don't worry about that. You know, like, remember the old movie, The Field of Dreams. If, they, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. Build, work on your craft, step out on faith, and invest in yourself. A lot of people, you know, don't invest in themselves, but they'll go pay money to see someone else or go pay money to do something else um, instead of putting it back into themselves and investing in, investing in them, themselves. I, like I would that. say definitely believe, step out on faith, invest in yourself, and work hard on your craft. Put your head down, work hard. See, that's the thing. A lot of comedians, they'll go out um, or actors, they'll go out and hang out, drink, net, they, they call it networking. But, you know, when I was out there, I really, I networked, but I worked harder on my craft to where I was trying to hit every stage I could, even bar shows, even. So you have to grind first to, to be successful, and that's what I did, and that's why it's coming. I love that. Oh, I, you know what? I love you. I just cannot wait. Let's start the party. Up and talk to Southlady, I'm about mine. Southlady, I'm gonna shine.